Chicago. This is John Parsons reporting from Ottawa with the third in our series of dispatches from the People's Social Forum. One of the major themes of the forum has been Indigenous rights and Indigenous sovereignty, and most all the sessions and workshops have begun by recognizing the unceded Anishinaabe territory that Ottawa occupies. Indigenous groups from all across the country have converged in Ottawa to attend the forum, including members of the Unistotin clan, whose territory is in northern BC. The Unistotin are blockading the Northern Gateway pipeline and refusing to allow industry access to their territory. I caught up with Frida Husson of the Unistotin clan, a land defender, for an update on the resistance. Maybe can you just tell us your name and what okay. group you are, represent? Okay, I'm Frida Husson, Unistotin, spokesperson for Unistotin clan. Excellent. And can you tell us um, What's going on in the camp right now, and what's the uh, status of the uh, pipeline? Um, we live in a blockade right now, so I don't technically call it a camp, but everybody knows it as soon as I had camp, but we actually have a family that lives in a cabin year-round. It's been living there for the last two years, and we have a bunch of supporters that come in, in and out, so it fluctuates up and down, and we have a ton of people, and we have... The a single lane bridge that's totally blocked off. We have signs saying no entry without consent. So the whole bridge is parked. Then we have a chain with a padlock and then we have a vehicle park. So anybody that's wanting to come in, we call it a soft blockade because we actually do protocol and ask people, who are you, are, who are you, where are you from? How long you plan to stay for let you in? Do you work for industry or government that's destroying our lands? And how will your visit benefit my people? And if they can't answer those questions successfully, they're turned around and not permitted in. So, so far the only company that has been permitted across the bridge is Can4 because they've been sitting down with my chiefs and revising their operational plans and stuff and changing the plans to suit our people's needs and telling them they can't chop down all the areas where we trap and where we pick our berries and medicines. They're honoring that and changing their logging practices so they're coming back in and because the tree planters have agreed that they would help monitor the areas we can't because they're all over in the back we allow them into our territories to plant and anytime they see any activity from industry they report it back to us they report it to their supervisor the supervisor comes right to our camp and tells us what they see okay just uh shifting gears a little tiny bit um, you guys have traveled all the way out for the social forum. How have you been finding the uh, People's Social Forum, or what do you think is important about it? Well, the main importance for us to be here is make connection with other Indigenous people that are struggling with the same struggles. We provide them with uh, what's been successful for us and what hasn't been, and they just get the knowledge from us and we get knowledge from them because all of us have had same struggles and we know what works for us so we've been really networking with other first people that are at this forum. Okay. And you've been finding it a valuable experience? Yes, it's generally. a valuable experience. We were here last year and then this year some same faces, some new faces and we're happy to support them in any way we can. Okay, great. And uh, is there any message that you'd like to give to uh, people in Newfoundland and Labrador? who are resisting uh, a hydro mega dam on the Churchill River. It's going to take people joining forces. It's going to take all walks of life to join forces with this because every waterway is connected and we all breathe the same air. And if we don't start doing something about it, all of us are going to be extinguished just like the dinosaur. So people need to wake up and start doing something. You can't just stay in your little apartments and go to your nine to five jobs and pretend you don't know what's going on around you. People need to wake up and educate yourselves and take part in trying to make change here. We can't continue at the rate where we're going, otherwise there'll be no more people here. For The Independent, this is John Parsons reporting from Ottawa.